The point of this program isn't to sprinkle a bunch of money out to as many companies as possible, even though, candidly, that would be easier. Our job is to make targeted investments in relentless pursuit of achieving our national security objectives. We have a finite amount of money to meet our urgent national security goals. And so I have to make every dollar count. We've made a few decisions that I'm announcing now. We've decided to prioritize projects that will be operational by 2030. We want to maximize our, imp our impact in this decade. It's not responsible to give money to a project that'll come online, you know, 10 or 12 years from now, if it means saying no to excellent projects that could come online this year. A year ago, before we saw the applications, I didn't know exactly what we could do. We said we want at least two ecosystems. And today I'm confidently standing before you to say by the end of the decade, we're gonna go from zero to 20% of leading edge built in the United States of America. And the supply chains will also come along with that. I'm confident the United States can become the home to the entire silicon supply chain for the production of these leading edge chips. From polysilicon production, to wafer manufacturing, <clears throat> to fabrication, to advanced packaging. That's the game, by the way. When I say, let's be bold, this is not build a few new fabs and call it a day. No, soup to nuts. Polysilicon to advanced packaging, everything in between, including R&D in the United States. By the end of this decade, by 2030, the United States of America will be the only country in the world where new chip architectures can be invented in our new research labs, including those funded by the NSTC. They'll be designed in the United States for every end use application you can think of manufactured at scale in the United States by well-paid American workers and packaged with the most advanced technology in the world, all on our shores.